you may be seated in the house of the Lord. We've been saying it all morning. We've been saying it all morning. He loves us. And I believe what happened to us a while ago was an awareness that turned into a confession. Maybe for some of us even a repentance because sometimes we tend to forget who our daddy is. Anybody with me? Anybody with me? Anybody with me? Anybody with me? Okay. And the thing about it is here we are standing on a day that is supposed to be, if you think about it, if God has appointed man to be the head of the home, then we are actually supposed to be standing on the most important holiday of all times. <laughs> it's called Father's Day. Yet if you check the stats and how we live in this world today, Father's Day, if you are not careful, will become extinct. It is becoming less and less an important day. And that caused me, I don't know about you, but that caused me to wonder. So I went on the red couch and I was just talking to the Lord and he started to show me some things and then I started to get into his heart. The title of my message this morning is Let Me Tell You Why My Daddy is Number One. I'm going to say it again. Let me tell you why my daddy is number one. Because when I spoke to him over the past couple of days leading up to this morning, it didn't feel to me like he felt he was treated as number one. What am I saying? Daddy God, Father God, feels like he's been regulated to an afterthought. And I want to this morning, if you don't mind, take time to just remind somebody as to why my father, my daddy, how many of you call him father? How many of you know that he's daddy? If you know that he's daddy father, lift your hand and just let me know. Praise God. Praise God. So when I talk to him, when I call him father and daddy, you know exactly where I'm going with this. Amen? Amen? Turn, to, turn with me, if you don't mind, to the book of Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. I want to show you a very important passage of scripture. We have heard it before, but I want to go deeper in it this morning to show you how relevant it is and even how overlooked. Exodus chapter 3 verse 13. This is, this is now, watch this. This is Moses talking to God because he's about to go to speak to the children of Israel about Pharaoh letting them go. Everybody good? Everybody know where I'm at? We're good? Amen. Somebody say amen. Come on, talk to me. Say amen. amen. All right. Good, good, good. Love to hear when you talk to me. Amen. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers have sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. Anybody hear that, that before? Anybody ever heard that before? This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am sent, I am, has sent me to you. Amen. Verse 15. God also said, somebody said, God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, watch this, the God of Abraham, somebody say Abraham, the God of Isaac, somebody say Isaac, come on, say it strong, say Isaac, and the God of Jacob, somebody say Jacob, has sent me. This is, don't miss this now, this is the part that really shook me. This is my name forever. The name you shall call me from generation to generation. My daddy is number one. Let me tell you why. Because my daddy has expressed to me, and I, I agree and I believe, that sometimes, even though he is the greatest father of all times, he's also the most neglected father. Neglected father. I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you why. Watch this. Let me give you some facts about Father's Day. 
and how we treat fathers. Father's Day, all countries celebrate it as far back as the 1500s. I'm going somewhere with you. Stay with me. All countries celebrate it as far back as, 15, as the 1500s. However, on June 19, 1910, a Father's Day celebration was held at the YMCA in Spokane, Washington by Senora Smart Dodd. Her father, the Civil War veteran William Jackson Smart, was a single parent who raised his six children there. Watch this. After hearing a sermon on Mother's Day, somebody said Mother's Day, <laughs> in 1909 at Central Methodist Episcopal Church, mm -hmm, she told her pastor that fathers should have a similar holiday to honor them. But watch this. Unlike Mother's Day, Father's Day was originally met with laughter. Come on, somebody. It was the target, rather, of much satire, parody, and contemptuous ridicule. With a local newspaper in that same place, Washington, complaining that if they keep this thing going, that we would even lead now to mindless promotions such as National Clean Your Desk Day. In other words, this father's thing is foolishness. Listen to me. You're probably looking at me saying, why are you telling me all this? You need to see the plan of the enemy. I'm going to bring it to where we live and show you the plan of the enemy. And how it affects us as we see God the Father. Stay with me. Watch this. However, the, of the event was made official by President Richard Nixon. So Richard Nixon did do some things right. Amen. Somebody say amen. 1972. 1972. 58 years after its maternal equivalent. So for 58 years we were celebrating mothers and neglected the fathers. Stay with me. Three holidays are more important. You want to take a guess? Christmas, Mother's Day, and Valentine's Day. Come on, somebody. In other words, with people spending double the amount of money on their mothers than they do to the fathers. Have you ever watched a football game or a basketball game when they win the championship? Where the man them always scream out and say, Hey, mom. Nobody calls the father. <laughs> so watch this. If you look at it, then watch this, watch this. If it is really Christmas, if it is really Valentine's Day and Mother's Day, then watch it. What are we saying to the fathers? We are saying to them, we love gifts, we love our mothers, and we love our boyfriend or our girlfriends more than we do our fathers. Why am I telling you this? Because I believe this has translated into how we look at God the Father. Can I preach the thing? Can I preach? Come on, talk to me. Can I preach? It's a strange relationship we have as humans where this Father thing seems to be so distant from us. And, and, and I'm going to show you something which the Holy Spirit did to me and I didn't realize it until yesterday. When I was watching a little clip and different news reports of this whole thing of George Floyd, of the man in Minneapolis, Minnesota, where that died, police killed him. Watch this. When I was watching the different news clips, I kept, for some reason, marking in my spirit the fact that he was crying out to his mother when he died. And I couldn't, it just wouldn't leave me until I did some research. The reason why he cried out to his mama is because he never knew his father. The father left the house when he was two years old. So you cry for the thing you're attached to that has treated you well. If daddy in earth messed you up, then you think daddy father in heaven wants to do the same. Can I preach the thing? And then what happens to us, we have an askewed, a, a, a relationship with God the Father as, as we see God, uh, as we see Daddy in the natural. And, and what usually happens to us when we are beaten and broken, when we are wrong, when we are in trouble, we don't run to God the Father first. We run to everybody else. Instead of going to God our Father. Touch your neighbor and say, this is going to get good. This is going to get good. Don't look so sad. Don't look so sad. Come on. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. 
This is going to be good. Because when you leave, you're like me. You will be saying, my daddy is number one. Here's why. He may be number three right now, number five. And he may not even be on your top ten. But when we're finished this morning, I believe you're going to put him right back to where he belongs. You're going to be boasting about your daddy and saying, daddy, you are number one. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. How many of you know this? Jeremiah, it's a very popular scripture. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. Watch this. The Lord used this scripture to show me why he should be number one. Can I, can I, can I, can I help you with it? Can I help you? Jeremiah, Jeremiah number, uh, chapter 1 verse 5 says this. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. This is God talking to Jeremiah and he's making a declaration to him. He's saying, listen to me, Jeremiah. Before I formed you in the womb of your mama, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as prophet to the nations. Watch this. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. The, the word form there means to fashion, to plan. So what God is saying, before I planned you and formed you and fashioned you in your mama's womb, I already knew you. Stay with me. Watch me. The word knew is the word acknowledge, made, acquainted, be, be, becomes known, chosen, clearly understand, cohabit. Watch this. So let's look at what he's really saying. He's really saying, before you get into your mama's belly, I already had a relationship and a life with you. Uh, <laughs> like Scooby Doo. Uh, why are we going? Uh, because guess what? We think we think we met God when we came to the altar and gave our lives to Him. We also think we we had an aware an, an awareness of God when we were born and walking around and we knew okay there was God. But what the scripture is challenging us to understand is before he placed you in your mama's belly. Come on now. Bruce, before he put you in Anne's belly, there was a Bruce and a Jesus and a God and a Holy Spirit that was formed and finished. <laughs> what am I saying? I'm saying this. God is the type of God who finishes you, then starts you. Who am I preaching to? Watch this, watch this. What do I mean by that? He has a relationship and a life and a destiny and, and blessings and, and, and working out things with you and bringing you to victory. Then he puts you into the God who is outside of time and outside of the earth. Now then comes down into the earth, puts you into your mama. You think the, 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 the person you love the first and love the most was mama. And when you see her, she can't do no wrong. And then right after that, you see daddy, you get a relationship with him. Not understanding that the first love you've ever had was your father in heaven and since that time he's been waiting to reconnect with you and he watches you as you neglect him and go through life talking about your mama and crying for your mama you, some of us will quicker give your mama and your daddy a second chance than you would God and he has never done anything wrong to you Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor. My daddy is number one. I'm putting him back right there where he belongs. So learning to understand that this, this daddy, this father God and me, we have this thing and we've been going for quite a long time. It's finished actually. He, he, the word, you, see, you have to understand the word I knew you is an intimate word. It means we, we, we. What, 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 what am I saying? What am I saying? Pastor, what are you saying? I'm not talking about him having knowledge of. That he could say, in wisdom and knowledge, I have a little bit more than your mom and your daddy. What he's actually saying is, what they are doing now, I've already finished. <laughs> Tie gets loose. I'm ready. You ready? You ready? So here's the thing you need to know. 
And I don't know where you are with your daddy. But your daddy could have been Bill Cosby before jail. And you are Theo Huxtable, same name, Huxtable. Mm -hmm. Dr. Huxtable and Theo Huxtable. Or better yet, you could even be Will Smith and Uncle Phil. That relationship is nothing to compare to Father God. Somebody say amen. Because he knew me before my mama and before my daddy. Watch this, watch it, watch it. So, so, so watch this now, so watch this now. Therefore, therefore, if, if our relationship was one that he knew and approved and then release me into the earth. Then, let's say my daddy was like Satan. And I'm Satan Junior. He still approved of me. Fam. Still approved of me and released me into Shirley. So what is he saying? He's actually saying he may come into the earth and become Satan Junior. But I still approve because I know what I've done before I put you in your mama's womb. <laughs> I'm preaching to. Eh? So you might see me down here in year 2020. I won't cuss me. You don't understand my daddy God in, in heaven, who's the only one who can stand me. You know, Jamaica said, so We can't stand you. Come on, talk to me. Nobody know what I'm talking about. So we can't stand you. No, no, I can tolerate. So even when mommy and daddy want to kick me out the house. And say, I'm the devil's picnic. My God already knew me and approved me. That was a good place for you to shout hallelujah right there. Come on. You know why? Because when you think back on your Satan Junior behavior, you should give thanks. That was a good, that's a good place for you to just jump out of your seat and say, thank you, Jesus. Especially those of you who have been rejected by your mama and your daddy. Come on. You should have stand up to your feet right there and say, hallelujah. Thank you, daddy. <laughs> Here's why. He's talking. Watch this. He's talking to Moses. And him choose three people associate the name to watch this forever and ever to generations to generations himself when you call me I am the God of Abraham Isaac and and who can I go through those three names for you and tell you who these people are maybe you can like Pastor Trudeau said locate yourself and it might encourage you to keep on going in this Christian faith. Somebody shout hallelujah. The, the, let's look at the God of Abraham. The God of Abraham. Who is Abraham? Man wants to remember him. Watch this. Uh, Abraham is the picture of various characteristics. Uh, Genesis 11 to 24, chapter 24. From 11, chapter 11 to 24 is the story of this great man, Abraham. Watch this. Can I read his resume for you a little bit? He's a righteous man with wholehearted commitment to God. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, I know Abraham. Uh -huh. A man of peace uh -huh. in settling a boundary dispute with his nephew Lot. Somebody said, Big Bad Abraham. Come on, so work with work with the preacher. He was hospitable. In other words, he welcomed three visiting angels and fed them. He was discerning. He was a man of God. Somebody said, Man of God brother Abraham. Mm -hmm. We're addressing the church and we have the, the big church meeting now. We have to give Abraham him props. Come on somebody. He's compassionate. He argues and bargains with God to spare the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. In other words, the worst place in the world. He's begging God, please forgive them. Please. What a man. What a man. What a mighty good man. Somebody shout hallelujah. Mm -hmm. He's a quick acting warrior. He rescues Lot and his family from a raiding party. Somebody shout hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You remember Abraham? The Bible says he believed the Lord and he was credited to him as a righteousness. Genesis 15 verse 6. He is actually called the father of the faith. 
Somebody say, what a man. What a man. What a mighty good man. But guess what? That same Abraham, <laughs> can I preach? That same Abraham, Genesis chapter 12 and Genesis chapter 20, was an unscrupulous liar to save his own skin. He passed off his wife as his sister. In other words, he, me not dead today. So guess what? Me don't go disown you. And I saw you. He actually told her before she went to the place. Somebody said, mighty man of God. Uh, you don't feel like saying that right now, do you? Make note as I go through all of these things that God did all of this before their story ended. Which proves how much he knew them. You miss it. You miss it. You miss it. I'm, I'm going to say it again. M make a note in your mind that he attached the God of the universe attached his name. You probably look at me going, but, but those men are special. No, 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 no. This is, if, if this book was written in 2020, God would have said, I am the God of Bruce. Come on, you may not like Bruce. I, I, I can't know y'all went silent a while ago. Trust me. It, it is not a, it's not, it's not, your opinion doesn't matter. He is the God of Bruce. He is the God of Keith. And watch the big shocker now. He's the God of Junior. Thank you for your approval. I appreciate it. When I was talking about Abraham, everybody was saying hallelujah. But we said Junior, only two people clap. And I'm not even looking, but I'm hoping Trudy said amen. Watch this. He agrees to disobey God and breaks God's plan by bringing in another woman and sleep with her. Forget the baby. Somebody said, man of God, man of God, man of God, man of God. What a man, what a man, what a man. What a man, what a man, what a man. By the way, the covenant that God gave Abraham was for him and his children to prosper. Can I tell you something? And I'm just let me tell you now, so bad mind not jump on you. Can I tell you, so you just put it in the air and just make bad mind not jump on you. Can watch this. Throughout all these testimonies I'm going to give, they started, they were increasing from generation to generation. Meaning, Abraham was blessed, Isaac was more blessed, and Jacob was more blessed. So, what am I saying? Even though they were living foul and had issues, God was blessing be careful when you see people and they're getting blessed. And they call you know, like one secret. You might say, how come she get blessed? When, when I know what she's doing. God, how come you bless her? When, when, when and she's living up. You don't understand the covenant that was made down here. <laughs> Touch your neighbor say, you don't know the end of the book. Touch him one more time. Don't make bad mind catch him. Touch him one more time and say, you don't know the end of my book. You see me now and you don't understand the love my father has for me. Come on, somebody. How many of you in this room, talk truth, how many of you in this room have ever been treated and mistreated by your parents, by your parents? Lift your hands. Put your hand, put your hand. your hands on your chest and say my father my real father knows my story watch this because this Abraham did those two things by the way can I tell you one more thing Abraham did before we move on from Abraham by the way Abraham watch this by the way Abraham watch this do you remember when I told you that he went and rescued Lot you remember, everybody remember that did you know that the Lot he rescued watch this now the lot, the person lot he rescued was the same lot that when the man them from Sodom and Gomorrah come, watch this, to, to rape the angels that came to the house, instead of running with the man them and stand up in between and just defend it with him life, said to the angel, to the man them, guess what? I have two virgin daughters inside. I'll send them out and you can deal with them. Let me ask you a question. If you were Abraham, would you save a like him? All the ladies, all the ladies say no. All the men say no. Yet Abraham saved a wicked man like Lot. These were people who had a serious problem with understanding the value of women. 
But God in his wisdom would still save them and have a covenant with them. Knowing that as the, the time progressed, we would get better. When Trudy married me, I remember looking at her and saying to her, and it was even said at the wedding, oh no, don't laugh after me when I, when I tell you these testimonies. I'm trying to help somebody. Please work with the preacher. Amen. I said to her, and my best man at the wedding even got up and said it back to her again. Said, your greatest challenge is not another woman. It's this thing called music. Because music is number one and you are about two or three or four somewhere down the ladder. And the, 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 oh bless her heart, the smart woman actually looked at me and said, what a fool you are. One day you will come to repent about that. And she stuck with me anyway. Somebody shout hallelujah. Why did I tell you all of that? I'm saying to you, isn't it sweet to know that some people have better sense than we? To know when we're going through foolishness and have patience to watch us go through it. Knowing that the end of the road, my story will end right. When Abraham was getting old, the Bible said he brought, bought a piece of land in, in, in the promised land. And he said to them, watch this now. Sarah and I will be buried in this tomb. That's a special thing. He's the father of the faith. For her and him to be buried in the same tomb. What he's saying is she is my equal. Watch the growth. From selling her. Don't tell him say you're my wife. To now we die together. You see the progress. If he didn't have a father who was patient with him. I'm preaching. To, I'm preaching to, what am I saying to you? That's why he's number one to me, my father. Because ain't nobody going to love me like him. Somebody shout hallelujah. Mm. By the way, before I move on from Abraham, do I have to come? Pray for the time. God will just redeem the time. Because Abraham also represents our beginnings. Abraham was an idol worshiper. How do you make covenant with an idol worshiper? And tell him, you are going to be the father of the new faith. In other words, he didn't go into the, the synagogue, right? He didn't go into the temple. And pick a perfect person. He picked the worst. Anybody near grateful that your father picked you? That's why we should never judge anybody else. We don't know their story. We don't know what kind of covenant God has with them. Sometimes you see a wretch and you don't understand. It's not, a, it's not the wretch why God is being so patient. It's because of the grandmama. Y'all don't hear me in this church. When I remember the mercies and the grace that I've gone through, I remember when I was a little boy and my grandmama used to put her hand on me and pray. Was she the perfect grandmama? Well, come on. <laughs> Somebody, I know Sharon can testify with me on that. She did some terrible things in her, in her time. Going to church with her Bible under her, her arm. Come on, somebody. Singing for the Lord. Oh. Yet there were some things she did right. I remember her put, putting her hand on me and praying. And I'm wondering, what is this woman doing? And I'm reaping those benefits today. Somebody say, he's the God of Isaac. Somebody say, he's the God of Isaac. Somebody shall say, the God of Isaac. Isaac, no, watch this now. Is Abraham on steroids. He did everything Abraham did, but more. Yet God would bless him double time than he did Abraham. Don't you say, my father don't make no sense. Don't try to figure it out. Has anybody in here has ever done anything wrong? And you know if you were judged by man, you'd be crucified. But God blessed you anyway. The God who saw everything you did. Even though you edit the story and tell people. Because you don't want it to really look too bad. The God who knows everything you did. 
and how much time you do it. Still bless you. Isaac from in Genesis 25 to 26 lied because he was afraid of man. Same thing him, him father do. He, he told the, the, the king, same king, or, or the same lineage, the same lineage, uh, the king. He told, he told the king, watch me, that this woman is not my wife, is my, is my sister. Same thing Abraham did. Isaac did the same thing. How many of us in here, God say it, you know your mama and you know your daddy, and in your mind, you say, I would never be like them. See, you know, me, me get Jesus, no, me go change, no. And before you know it, two years into your walk, you are doing the same things your mama. Don't look, don't look to your left, don't look to your right. Look straight at me. Look straight at me. Your mama, some of you have your mamas and your daddies in here. Look, um, work out your salvation, baby. In fear and trembling. Look straight at the preacher. Can I testify? I told myself I will not be like my daddy. I was actually upset that there were two boys before me and I'm me getting near. Yeah, there's Ricardo and Marlon. Then there's me. Well, from the ones we know, hallelujah, bless God. Because there are some other children, praise God. Even though my father would tell you, don't call none of them, picking them outside. Because all of them are inside hospital. Come on. What a powerful man. Amen. By the way, I'm going somewhere with this. This man I'm telling you about, his story ended right. Just keep that in your mind. Keep, keep that in your mind. Where am I in the story? Can I, can I keep on? Isaac. <laughs> okay. Isaac was just. Like Abraham, do the same things. Tell the man, says, not him, wife. Watch this. Watch this. And I must get in trouble. And it's a similar thing in my, 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 my father. I told myself I didn't want to be like him. But watch this. Because he was a man who, okay, I saw him smoke like one or two times. He wasn't, didn't, wasn't really a smoker. But in my family, they were smokers. So in my strength, my own human strength. I didn't smoke. No smoking. Never done it from us born. Never done any drugs from us born. Praise God. A lot of alcoholism in my family. I don't drink. Praise God. But here's my problem. Or what was my problem? Thank you, Jesus. My daddy loved women. The flesh. 19 of us. Different mamas. He was a busy man traveling the streets, holiday preaching all over the place. His gospel, amen. And my mama couldn't take it anymore, so she left him. Here's the problem with me. I said to myself, I would not do that. I want to settle down. I want to get married. But here's my issue now. Get married. One girl. Trudy. Wife. You know. Have baby. Now, good yacht. I am not like my father. Yet, every now and again on the internet, I will go visit some women. <laughs> Stay focused. <laughs> Can I testify? <laughs> I will go visit some people. And here's the thing, here's the beauty of Matthew totality on my head. We, we, I mean, we will even design ways how to sin and, and ease our conscience. They're not troubling through, they. When my dumb just lock up the computer, them stay right there, sir. Can I preach? And the Lord said to me one day, you are just like your father. The only difference is you are your father, not like 2.0. You're a cyber version or a modern version of your daddy. Watch this. Isaac is in between fleshly father and spiritual father. Have you ever found yourself in the middle 
of what your spiritual father wants you to be. But there's some things about the DNA of your past father that wants to make you think it is natural for you to be that way. Which father is going to win? Here's the question. Who's your daddy? Y'all quiet in church this morning. Can I preach? Hmm? You see, here's the problem with Isaac. Isaac was never one for confront confrontation. Because how I got over this whole pornography thing, I had to go and confront it. I had to go in front of friends and people who love me and pray and have deliverance. Come on, talk to me, somebody. And, and, and put things in my life that would give me parameters and ways how to deal with it. And accountability. I had to, someone said, confront it. Isaac's problem was every time, you read the story, every time he would reach somewhere and dig a well and settle, his friends and different people who would come into his life would come and take the well. And Isaac would go, okay, and let's move on to another place. Here's the thing. No matter how you move from church to church or place to place, there you are. Whoop, there it is. Because the issue is not the location. The issue is the insulation. I moved from Clewiston to Oklahoma, come on somebody, to Jamaica, and I'm still dealing with pornography. Can I preach? Until I say, you know what, God? I am not Leslie Tucker Sr. Who do you say I am? I had to go back to my original father, the one who formed and knew me. You catch it down? My God. Somebody says, shout, shout hallelujah. After a while, you're going to have to say enough is enough. By the way, this woman problem or this man problem, watch me, Isaac, Isaac had a woman problem, just like in daddy. And this woman, his wife, actually did some trickiness. Somebody said trickiness. Is that word? Trickiness. That even set up the next generation now to be in problems. Somebody shout, he's the God of Jacob. Somebody say, he's the God of Jacob. Very interesting. Watch this now, watch this now. Watch this, watch this, watch, 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 watch this, watch this, watch this. The Bible says that he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and who? But he changed his name from Jacob to Israel. So why keep the tricky name? By the way, Jacob means trickster. So what God is saying is, I am the God of the trickster. You would think if I'm going to clean up my, my name and my rep, I don't want nothing associated with me that has anything to do with trickery. I'm going to clean you up first, then bring it to me. But thanks be to the God. That even when I'm in my most shameful state, and human beings don't want to have nothing to do with me, Don, here comes my daddy walking in the courtroom and said, that the one that belonged to me. Somebody shout hallelujah. If you love your father, shout hallelujah. Somebody shout my daddy is number one. Because he's not ashamed to link himself to the trickster. He said, leave your name. There are certain faiths that once you come into the faith, they change your name. In other words, we're going to kill everything that you were. God says, no, keep everything that you were. Because I want to use it as a testimony. How am I going to let... People in the, in the future know that I'm the God who loves the people who are not, you know, normal. If all of my children act like they are perfect. That's why some people don't go to some churches. But before you go into the church, you feel like you got to get yourself ready before you go in. And it's the church that is willing to say, no, we're trying to get it, get it together ourselves. You come on in and help us and we help you and we move together and we'll try to talk to me, somebody. He is the God of Abraham, the father of the faith. 
He is the God of the Isaac who represents blessings. But he's also the God of the trickster. The one who keeps falling. Good God. Have you ever read Jacob's life? I don't have time to give you the rundown. Of what, Because what Abraham did and what, and what um, Isaac doubled in full f- 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 truth. Somebody give me a word. Give me a word. Give me, give, help the preacher. Is that a word? Quadruple No, quadruple too nice. Like, 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 God. But here's the turnaround. Here's the turnaround. Here's the turnaround. God is now. Can I, can, I, can I show you and reveal to you what we are now seeing that God already knew from Dungasa? Go with me now to Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32, verse 22. Genesis 32, 22. That night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his 11 sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. It's just a river. Watch this. Verse 23. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone. And a man or an angel wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. What do you mean by your, when you need blessing? Didn't you just send your possessions over into the next land? And your 11 sons and all your cattle and all your wives. What kind of position are you talking about? Don't miss the story. Watch me, watch me, watch me. After he had sent him across the stream, he's in the other position. He's in the one. Watch this. You can send yourself to the promised land. Don't miss this. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Watch this. Verse 28. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel. Because watch it. Don't miss this. Because you have struggled with God. Somebody say amen. And with humans. And have overcome. Preacher, what are you talking about? I'm going to finish with this. Watch this. Watch this. The breakthrough came. When Jacob said. I understand I'm about to go over into the promise. In other words, God keeps doing what he said he would do. I keep getting blessed, Pam, blessed, and blessed. My grandfather did bless. My daddy did bless. I'm blessed. That's not the issue. I am. I am not going into my promise. You see, I could keep preaching to you while still watching. You would know. Because can I tell you the truth? There were times when you didn't. Can I talk truth? You'll still come back to church next week? Who coming back to church next week? Lift your hand. Lift your hand. Praise God. I still have an audience. God is a good God. But it's not good enough for me. And until you come to that place, you will even get blessings and die in the blessings. You don't tell me about your mama and your daddy rich. That don't mean nothing. Wicked people rich. That don't, that, that, that's, not, that's not your approval that God is pleased with you. God will bless you even in your messiness. Even in your rebellion, God will bless you. I'm going to tell you why he's number one. When Jacob said, I'm not going anywhere until you bless me. In other words, God will never change your name until you send everything that matters to you ahead of you. The Bible said Jacob was alone. Don't miss that. In other words, Keith, he didn't bring his possessions and say, see, 
I'm doing what Abraham and Isaac did. So I'm fulfilling covenant, right? So I'm good, right? He said, no, no, forget the covenant for a minute. This is between me and you. So he went back to the place, watch me, of when they knew each other. And there was no possessions. There was no covenant. The, he was alone. And he did not change his name. Why? We miss it all the time. Thinking it's about a name change. No. It's about a character change. God says I am the father. He's the God of Abraham. Isaac. Jacob. So I need Jacob. about the name. I'm worried about the character and the reputation behind the name. Today in 2020, I am still Leslie Tucker Jr. But can I tell you how awesome my daddy is? That not only did he change Leslie Tucker Jr., he changed Leslie Tucker Sr. Now both of us are of different character. Keeping our names. Do you know how many places I've been where when I go there, the door closed. And by the time I reach there and somebody says, is who? I'm going to say, Junior Tucker. And I'm going to click. Oh, it's you. They're thinking of Junior who was in Canaan. Until they buck up upon a different character. So the name Jacob, the trickster, even opens for me to now show the new person. You can carry the name, don't carry the character. Good God Almighty, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet, everybody stand to your feet. I'm, I'm finished. The angel said to Jacob, Jacob, you have wrestled with God. Very important, but you have also wrestled with man. What do I mean by that? You have wrestled, Jacob, with Abraham and with Isaac. You have wrestled with your DNA and you have overcome. Sometimes we wrestle with God and we ignore him and walk away from him. And we forget to wrestle with man. Who's that man? You. Your daddy. God is saying to you today, this day. Leave your possessions for a minute. And let's wrestle. Because I need you to get right. Because we're going to finish covenant down here. Lift your hand across the building. Here's why I want you to lift your hands. Because ain't nobody going to leave you with their heads down now. You're going to leave your understanding that guess what? My daddy, my real father, is number one. Why? Because he gave me covenant from way down your son. He has committed himself to my victory. Therefore, I will always have victory. As long as I keep him number one. Put him back on his throne, would you? Would you lift your hands and just make him number one again? Say, Happy Father's Day. Tell him you're loving this morning. Come on, open your mouth and say, Happy Father's Day. Come on, somebody needs to reconnect with your daddy. When you're, when you're talking about daddy, you're not talking about the daddy at, at home or the daddy who treated you bad. I need you to get it right, get it right. Stop, stop letting that block you from your relationship with the one who first loved you. Lift your hands and say, Daddy, I love you. Father God, I love you. Pam, I remember when I got saved. I used to call him God. I used to call him, you know, you know, you know. I, I, I was, I was so in, in awe and reverence to this, to this God that saved me. Until God said to me one day, He said to me, "Call me Daddy." I said, "No," because the word Daddy wasn't a good word for me. Daddy, Daddy was pained and being used and abused and felt thrown aside. And I felt like my Daddy only cared about me as long as I made the money.
remember, I remember, I remember when he died and I got the call. First thing I did was run to the phone and call Tommy Cowan. Guess why? Because he was the next daddy in line. And I just wanted to hear his voice. Why? Because in the natural, I felt like if I didn't have any daddy, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be lost. It wasn't until I started to learn that it's daddy who loved me before my father and before Tommy Cowan. God bless all of them. Bishop Tony Miller, Pastor David Keene. But the truth is, my daddy, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, give me, Judah, give me my daily bread, which is my communion with you. And forgive us of my trespasses as I forgive those who have trespassed against me. But deliver us from evil. Because you are my God. And you are a good God. And you are a good God. You are a good. Lift your hands. And say, my daddy is number one. Father, forgive us for every time that we have neglected you. And treated you like you were number two or number three or even number ten. Just like I repented. And I've learned that my wife is so connected to me. She's one with me. I now understand the priority that it is for me to keep you in front of me and to make you my first love. That's not up to you. That's up to me. I repent. Happy Father's Day. Here comes your gift. Somebody lift your hands and give him the gift. Come on. Oh, shake it up, Somebody lift your hands and give him his gift. Come on. Give him his gift. That's you. Come on, lift your hands. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. 